Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be solving the lab exercise on complex time series forecasting. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting as part of a broader goal of building out the full discounted cash flow valuation of stock. So this lab exercise came at the end of the complex forecasting material and it's asking us to uh, take Caterpillar's financials and forecast the next year of cash um, using both the quarterly seasonal trend model as well as the automated software approach and then plotting both of the forecasts. So I'm going to go through this fairly quickly because um, it is very, very similar to what I showed in the examples. Um, so from Fin statement, I'm going to import the um, income statement, balance sheet, financial statements, uh, balance sheet, financial statements, import pan as PD. Um, going to read the um, Excel files for um, the Caterpillar um, balance sheet. And I know that we're going to want the next column to be zero to pick up those statement line items. Um, and then do the same thing with the income statement. And then I can create the balance sheet data with the balance sheets from data frame, from the balance sheet data frame, and then the income statement data as the income statements from the data frame of the income statement data frame. And then I can make the statements as financial statements from the income statement data and the balance sheet data. Um, so it looks like that worked because now we're getting all the standard um, kind of messages here. Um, so it wasn't able to load in certain items um, because they didn't really matter for this. Um, and it's using EBIT as the value for um, operating income. <clears throat> so as that loads in, uh, we can talk about the next step, which is going to be um, plotting the cash um, so that we can um, see uh, what uh, kind of time series we're working with. If uh, we really need to do the quarterly seasonal trend model. So now we can see the statements came through. Um, and let's look at that plot. Um, so definitely looks weird. Um, you know, maybe a trend approach should be fine for this. It doesn't seem to be a really regular pattern, uh, but there does seem to still maybe be some repeating kind of seasonality in here. Um, so let's go ahead and go forward with the, um, the seasonal trend model. Um, so in order to uh, work with that, we looked at uh, creating a data frame out of the um, line item that we want to forecast, uh, and then setting the name of the column. Okay, so now we have that cache data frame. Um, and then we talked about creating the T variable as this range uh, length of the uh, data frame. Uh, sorry, cache DF. And now we have that T variable in there as well. Um, then we talked about <clears throat> creating the month variable by um, extracting the month from the date in the index. Okay, that seems to have worked as well. Um, and now we can use pandas's get dummies uh, in order to um, convert those into dummy variables. Get dummies on the cache data frame. And the column we want to do it on is month. We can see that worked appropriately as well. 
Um, and so now we want to run the regression so we can get the month columns as each column um, in the data frame, dash df dot columns. Um, if month is in the column, and then the x columns is going to be t plus those. Okay, so that's all our x columns. We can um, then go to using stats models. Um, so we're going to have the y is going to be uh, the cache. We're going to have the x as adding a constant uh, to the x columns. And then we're going to use the OLS model uh, and tell it that it uh, has a constant. And then uh, fit the model. And look at the summary of the results. So then we can see it does look like it was fit properly. Uh, we have a decently high R squared. Uh, we have a constant, the T, and the Four different month dummies uh, fitted. So now we can go to uh, predicting the future. So we can uh, look at the max of the T column to see what was the last uh, period in the data. Uh, so that oops, as the last T um, and then t is, is going to be the last, t plus 1. Okay. Um, but really, we just want to go forward and um, do all the forecasts. Um, so we can set up a forecast dictionary. Um, oh, and first, we want to make the date range that we want to forecast over. So we can use um, date range. Um, and uh, here is the last period. So it's going to be starting from um, the end of uh, December. And the frequency is going to be every three months. And the uh, periods, we're going to do four periods. Um, so yep, that looks right. Um, so we can call these the forecast dates. Um, so then we can get a counter variable as well as the date in our loop here. Um, and we can create our offset for T as I plus one. And we can create the T as last T plus the offset. Month is going to be uh, the month of the date. And then uh, we can create the forecast in the dictionary uh, as the um, oh, is it result? Yeah. So as the um, constant plus uh, the t times the t plus the appropriate months uh, dummy variable coefficient. So result uh, params, uh, here we'll use a formatted string of month underscore and then the month. Okay, so then that should give us our forecast. Okay. Uh, forecast dates. There we go. And now we have our four forecasted periods. Um, and we can make a series out of that. See that a little more clearly. And we can plot that as well. Um, I really want to um, plot it along with the um, along with the historical to see how it fits in. 
Um, so now we can do um, all cache is we want to concatenate um, the cache with the forecast. Um, and then we can pop that. Um, so now we see this forecasting period chunked on the end, which seems like it fits pretty reasonably in. So it seems like this was a decent job, though it's you know not as clear as some of the patterns we have looked at before. Um, so that's the uh, quarterly seasonal trend model. And then to look at the um, automated approach, Um, so there, um, we can look at the forecast assumptions. So by default, things use the compounded annual growth rate. Um, but we want really right now, we just care about cash for the purpose of this exercise and the auto method does take longer. So I'm just going to adjust only that one to use the auto method. So big dot update, um, the uh cash um to use that method um forecast config um and it's going to set the method now to auto um and we will also have to um turn the plug off for cash um because if it's a plug it's going to be adjusted manually after the forecast and we'll have to make something else the plug instead um so we can instead um say that we want to make um short-term um, investments the plug uh, which I believe is ST invest. Yep, ST invest. So we can make uh, short term investments the plug instead. And now we'll see cash is now auto and not a plug. Um, and we have to set, previously it was not um, forecasting that. So we have to set make forecast true. And yes, now we see cash is set to auto. Um, short-term investments um, is now the plug on the asset side. So now we should be good to go ahead and do the forecast. So statements dot forecast. I want to do a four-period uh, forecast. So now that's happening. Forecast the income statement. Now it's working on the balance sheet. Um, and it does take a little bit of time. Now it's balancing the balance sheet. That takes some time as well. Okay, now it's done. Um, so now we can uh, plot uh, cash. And we see the cash forecast there. Um, so that seems to have been able to take into account the, um, the seasonality in the data. Um, and if we want to look at the actual um, values of the forecast, uh, then we can look at the cash in the forecast. Um, so there, then we have um, done both methods. And when we look at the forecasted statements, um, we should also see that the um, balance sheet is remaining um, in balance as well, which it is. Um, due to now having short-term investments as the plug in here. So that's uh, how you would do this uh, complex time series forecasting lab of using both the quarterly seasonal trend model as well as the automated software approach. So thanks for listening and see you next time.